Uh, I'm recording it so you can you can have this recording. Okay? Uh, Go ahead. I'm, I'm recording it so you can have the recording. Oh yeah. Um, no, I was drinking a lot of soda, so I cut the I cut that out and started drinking a lot of water. Um, and that was probably about three or four weeks ago. So now I would say it's um, not even so much as a habit. It's just kind of my lifestyle now. I drink a lot of water, um, but that's always a good habit to have. Um, and probably the newest one that I decided to form um, as well as going to the gym. Uh, I go to the gym a couple of times a week now, whereas I didn't go at all. Um, Those are all good habits. Yeah. Those are all good habits. That's the key. You do these things on long enough, they'll become part of you. And guess what? You get good results. Mm -hmm. Good results. Okay. So what you're going to learn is based on not only my experience, other people's experience, but also specifically Grant Cardone, right? Some people like him, some people don't, but here is a man who's a billionaire. More mm -hmm. important, I think I might have told you that he was dropped off in a location. He knew nobody. He had no connections. He had $100 to his name and a truck and he could not use his name, his connections, his money or any of that stuff and had to build a million dollar business in 90 days. <clears throat> and he did that, okay? And this was during COVID when everything started shutting down. Mm -hmm. So the reason I mentioned that is the skills that he developed are the ones we are going to learn. See, that's all it is. It's a question yeah. of using those skills. When those skills become habits for you, then it doesn't become like, oh, it's of course, this is my lifestyle, right? This is not anything. So one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is to spend at least 30 minutes in the training system we have. You'll have access to it maybe today, latest by Tuesday, you know, okay? And then I will show you a little bit of it today so you can see what it looks like. And then when you actually get access to it, you and I will jump on a call again. So I'll walk you through it again just because I don't think you have access to it yet. Let me just cross check. I, I sent it for uh, what do you call it? access to it. I don't see it yet. Okay, so we'll jump on a call for about five, 10 minutes. I'll walk you through so you know how to access all the modules. I'll show you where to start and you do it for 30 minutes minimum. I've asked my daughter to do it for two hours a day right now. She's 18, she's turned 19 in August. And the goal for her, it's up to you to have that goal, but that's the goal I have, is that for mm -hmm. do the whole modules every month, repeat them every month for 12 months. Because it takes, mastery takes repetition, right? Mm -hmm. And the more you repeat, the easier it gets. That's the number one thing. Number two is we have calls 9 a.m. Eastern, which is 8 a.m. Central, Monday through Friday. Okay. We are meeting on Monday, Memorial Day as well. So if you want to join on Memorial Day, as again, learning is daily process, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I lead a good life. I don't have to go on a vacation necessarily. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like I go walk on the beach every evening. You know, it's like life is good. So I'm not saying that's for everybody, but for me, I don't have to like say, okay, I need a big vacation because I'm so stressed out. That's yeah. where you want to reach in life. Yeah. Okay. It's like you don't need a vacation. You you vacation because you want to go someplace, have something, do something. Nothing wrong with that. Go meet your sister as an example. Perfectly fine. But mm -hmm. most people take a vacation because they're burnt out, stressed out, because they can't handle the day to day stress. And like, that's not what we are looking for. We want mm -hmm. to enjoy every day. Is that helping yeah. you understand the context of it? Learning, yes. growing, improving every day. Having fun with people in life every day. So it mm -hmm. doesn't become like, oh, I haven't done this. My philosophy is very simple, which is why your dad decided to coach with me because he saw me, your mom saw me as well with my daughter and we have a good life, okay? Mm -hmm. So I want you to have that thinking. It's not that someday, you know, today. Nobody's guaranteed tomorrow, today, okay? So those sure. trainings are very critical. Stay on the training. Unless it's very, very critical, don't miss any training. As okay. I promise you, just being in those. Now, once your college starts, I don't know what your calendar looks like, but mm -hmm. until the college starts, just be there, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you and I will be talking like this once a month, but I'll be checking with you roughly every week to see your progress. Okay. So here is what you can count on me. I'm 100% committed to your success. 
100%. You have a situation, you have a problem, you think you could use my guidance, reach out to me. Okay. Because based on my experience, based on what other people are doing, I can guide you or maybe sometimes you just need somebody to listen. No problems. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I'm on a call or doing something, I may not be able available at that very moment, but I'll make my best effort to return to you as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. You have that guarantee from me. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Any questions on that? No. Okay, good. So one goal you mentioned to me is to have $100,000 in the next three years, right? Yes. Okay. Now, I see no reason why that will not happen. <laughs> I mean, I think you'll accomplish more than that. You're a okay. smart man. You're a hardworking man. You're willing to learn. You'll blow through that goal. Okay. But the first thing is to achieve the goal. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure that you achieve that goal. Because what happens when you achieve a goal that's important to you? Feel good. Yeah. You feel good about achieving the next goal. Mm -hmm. And the next goal. And the next goal. And the next goal. Guess what? You grow. And then it's not about money or anything. It's having that confidence that you can chase a goal down and achieve it. And that's what at young age like you, yours, man, you can have anything you want in your life. You are very smart to understand the value at your age. Most people don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Okay, very good. So let me first show you a quick module so that you understand what we are covering, some of these modules we are covering. Okay. The foundation is sales. So there are five skills you need to master, okay? In general, when you're talking of business and career. The first okay. skill is goal setting. By setting a goal for 100,000 as an example, you already started on that journey, right? Okay. Number two is network, which means doesn't matter where you are, you can create new connections, whether it's on social media, in person, anywhere. Does that make sense to you, right? Okay, mm -hmm. number one, number two. Number three, which obviously your family is good at. Number three is sales. And I will teach you the sales from the proper perspective that most people never learn. Because without selling, you can make no money. Mm -hmm. Without sales, there is no income who have a job had to sell themselves, right? You know what I'm saying, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how they made the money. And the next one is leadership. This is where you help other people achieve goals also. So not only do you accomplish goals for yourself, but now you're able to turn around and help other people achieve goals as well. That's leadership. Okay. And the last one is money mastery. In business, the only thing that counts is money. Why? Because you can open a nonprofit, you can open a charity. Mm -hmm. Business is all about profit and money. If at the end of the day, you don't have money, it's not called business. Mm -hmm. Good. So give me your two cents, your comments on what I just told you. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest one for me, I think, is going to be sales. I can't necessarily say that I know sales, you know, super, super well. Um, as far as networking, that might be one of the, not the easiest, but one of the, you know, strongest points that I can have is I think I can network with people. Um, money mastery from like a business perspective, I think, you know, I, I know what I know and I can always learn more. Um, so in that aspect, you know, you're never finished. Um, and then just overall, yeah, I think when it comes down to business, the five, those five skills um, definitely take you all the way. Exactly. So how many people know, even know that these five skills are required? Probably not, not a whole lot of people. Yeah, even if you go and talk to those agents who are in your mom's office mm -hmm. and say, hey, which are the five skills that if you mastered each one of them, will be achieving huge success in business. Mm -hmm. They might come up with a couple of them which are similar, but not everybody will come up with all five. But 
those are the five you need. You know what I'm saying, right? Okay. Now, can you get technical about, okay, I need real estate, this and that. Yeah, but those are technical skills, right? They don't apply to every business. This applies to every yeah. business. Yeah. Okay. So good. So now that you know them, we will work on getting you the skills in the next 12 months so that you actually have much more, much more success because you can see what you need to improve upon. I will okay. give you very specific examples and exercises in different areas. We'll build on it. So the one thing which we will need to work really hard on is goal setting. Because unless you set goals which are clear and compelling for you, nothing will ever make a difference. If it doesn't okay. inspire you, it won't take you to action. Yeah. Okay. So the first assignment for you is to be very clear what your goals are. So what I want you to do is in the next week, send me your goals in the different areas that are important to you. Okay. Again, we will keep improving them. This is just step by step. This is not like you will run everything in one day. I did not. Right. So you'll write down the goals in the areas that are important to you. Typically, business is one of them. Right. Okay. You might have some personal goals that are important to you. Okay. There are some financial goals of how much money, like we talked about, that could be important to you. So again, different areas, fitness might be important. Great. Just write down, doesn't have to be strange goals or anything. Just at least something to start with. Mm -hmm. Something to start with. Okay. okay. Because those, anytime you don't feel like taking action, it's because you have lost emotional connection with the goal. That's the only reason. You lose, lose the motivation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that happens to all of us, which is why you have to keep reminding yourself. Like being on the call with me on a daily basis in this group, you are going to be reminded every day mm -hmm. until it becomes a habit. Yeah. As soon, what will happen? You'll be doing that for other people. Mm -hmm. You'll be the motivation for other people. Okay, good. Yeah. So let me show you, I don't know how well you can see on the video, but uh, on the screen here, but let me just bring it up here. Hold on for a second. So there are lots of modules. I'm just going to show you a four minute video, which I typically run at a faster pace than one, 1.5, We'll run at 1.5. This is the first time you're watching it. And it's on closing and objections, but this is the mindset you need to have in every interaction you have with the prospect. Okay, so watch okay. this and we will discuss this. So hold on for a second. If you can't hear or see, let me know about the video, okay? Okay. Okay, number 10. Treat the prospect, treat the person in front of you like a buyer. If I could eliminate the word prospect from your language, I would. Treat them like buyers. One of the biggest errors made while negotiating, particularly, particularly, especially by experienced salespeople, is the mistaken ability, supposed ability, that the experienced person has to determine who is and who is not a real buyer. Look, regardless of the circumstances, I don't care what they told you or what the situation is. No money, no budget, they got tax problems, they're not the decision maker, they can't make a decision. You know, they are the decision maker, but they can't make one. I don't care what you hear, treat the buyer like a buyer. Whether they have $10 or $100 million, treat them like they will buy from you, treat them like they can buy from you, treat them like they're gonna hook up, and they'll start hooking up. If it is to be, they say it is up to me. And if it is for you, then it's up to you, right? Look, you wanna treat them all alike, treat everyone like a buyer. Treat them like solid gold, important VIP, okay? Treat them like royalty. No matter how difficult, how tough, how resistant, how hard to close they are, how financially screwed up they are, treat them like they can play. You don't make them wrong, how can they be wrong? They're, they're gonna buy your kids bikes for Christmas. They can't be wrong, don't make them wrong. Don't talk negative to other coworkers about your buyer, okay? Don't use slang to describe your buyers. I'm giving you some things to stop doing, okay? Every industry, from mortgage business to automobiles to appliance sales to insurance, you have this slang, slang words or nomenclature that you use regarding your buyer. Look for signs that they are a buyer, okay? Look for a sign, something that gives you evidence, regardless of what they say, that they are buyers. I'll give you an example. I have this little trick that I play on myself, okay? Uh, when I'm in a close, and I got a tough customer, and I got a situation, I'm having trouble getting it, and I'm starting to talk myself, unwind myself out of the deal, you know? He's not gonna buy, I'm starting to buy his presentation, basically. I survey, this is the trick, I survey the prospect for all the signs that would demonstrate that they've bought in the past. Oh, he's got a watch on, okay? He's got a shirt on. 
He's got a suit on. I've got a necklace, maybe. Oh, they drove up in a car. The house, oh, they, yeah, I remember that house. I was at their house. Oh, they spent that money on the party. Oh, the guy's got a credit card. That's how he bought his lap, blah, 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 right? I collect evidence that suggests there's a history of buying. See, all this evidence, the watch, the, sh the shirt, the jacket, okay, the shoes, all that evidence, the car he drove up in, the house he lives in, actually demonstrates the ability and his history of not just buying, but being closed. See, regardless of what this person is telling me, I always tell myself, Grant, every buyer is a buyer. It is my mantra. Every buyer is a buyer, right? Every buyer is a buyer. Treat them like they're going to buy. Treat, treat them like they will buy, and you can turn people into buyers. Knock off the negative talk. Knock off the blame. Treat them like buyers. If you truly believe they will all buy today, tomorrow, or one day in the future, and you really, really, really believe this, it will change everything you do with your customer. It'll change everything you say, and it'll change how you act. The bottom line is this. Every human being on this planet, six and a half billion people on this planet, I don't care if they're homeless and begging for food today. Every human being on this planet is a buyer. One day, someday, somehow, some way, they're going to hook up for something. Whether it's with you or not is up to you, okay? Treat them like buyers. Treat everyone like a buyer. Okay. Let's do a quick quiz on it. Okay. You should only treat the customer like a buyer if they display signs that they are a buyer. True or false? False. Good point. Okay. False. Using your industry slang names for buyers should be avoided. True or false? True. Good. Last question. Who should you treat like a buyer? Those who appear qualified, repeat customers, everyone, and none of the above. Everyone. Hey, you got all the three right. There we go. You were paying attention. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from it? It makes perfect sense. I mean, if you've got someone that's not a buyer, there's no reason to not treat them like a buyer. Because it's like you said, eventually they might buy, even if, you know, if they don't buy, you know, however it works. If you treat them like they're not a buyer, they're not going to buy. But if you treat them like a buyer, there's still a chance they buy. So in that regard, from just a customer service sales defense point, everyone is a buyer. You should definitely treat everyone as a buyer. Exactly. You see how easy it becomes to interact with a person that you believe is already a buyer. Mm -hmm. You're no longer under stress to sign them up, get an agreement, get a payment or any of that stuff. Why? You're treating the person like a buyer. Mm -hmm. And now you said exactly, give them the service they need in order to be that buyer. Because here is what is hap happening. They are going to buy. <laughs> it's a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't it be you? Very they true. They are not. They are going to buy. They'll be like, I remember that young man. He really knew what he was talking about. I loved his ambition. He really cared about me. I'm giving him my business. Mm -hmm. That's what will happen. Because you treated him like a buyer. Not like you need his money. More like, hey, I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you. And when you change sales into adding service value to people, people see that you respect them. People mm -hmm. want to do business with you. This alone will separate you from the other agents in your office. 12 months or less, you'll be one of the top people in your uh, mom's brokerage. Why? Because you took the time to master the basics and really master them. Yeah. So you'll have access to all these modules. Let me show okay. you what the modules are so that you can get a sense of them. This is huge library. This is like huge library. So as you can see here, attitude, mindset, goals, prospecting, greeting, when you meet the prospect for the first time, fact-finding, selection, negotiations. Look at how many, he has six modules on negotiation. Objection handling, four. Follow-up, so many of them, six, right? If you get mm -hmm. an incoming call, how do you handle that? You have an outgoing call. How do you do that? If you're getting internet leads, if you have sales meeting and you're obviously doing new hire orientation. 
all of these modules you have. I showed you just a short video, but every one of them has a lot of information. Like this is attitude. So you can look at all these modules, right? These are all short two to five minute videos that you can watch. And hence, just make it like, hey, this is my study program. Okay. Not only that, not today, but we will go through the workbooks on an ongoing basis. Okay, so this will be something you'll be going through our daily classes as well. So we have all the workbooks here available for you in order to follow along the training which is being provided to you. Okay. Does that make sense to you, right? Good. Yep. Yeah. So good. Any questions on what we covered so far? Nope. Not yet. Okay, good. So let's write down the assignments you have. Okay. So number one assignment is to write down the goals in the important areas of your life. Okay. I'll help you fine tune it. Okay. Number one. Number two is you start looking at like the areas that are important to you as saying, hey, I must do something as a habit. Like what habit if I developed in those areas, it would become easier for me to bring those things to happen. Mm -hmm. Because the only reason we don't have something is mentally we haven't pictured ourselves owning it. Okay, if you don't have the car that you want, it's because mentally you haven't figured out a way to program your mind to feel that you actually already own it. Same thing with lifestyle of habits in terms of health, relationships, etc. Right? Okay, yeah. so that is number one assignment for you. I will email that to you as well as soon as we are done. Number one. Now we talked about five skills in order to improve in business. The first skill we talked about was goal setting. So we just addressed that, correct? Let's mm -hmm. talk about networking. So let me give you the overall frame of thinking. If you have a thousand people that you have developed some connection with where they remember you as the person they should do business with, over a time period, you will never have to worry about making it. Mm -hmm. Okay? The number is 1,000 because it takes more people than you realize to get business. The number is not 100. The number is 1,000. I don't know how many people you know, but you can start growing your list of people. You have a list of people that you know, they know you. If you were to make that list, how many people do you have on your list? People I know who know me. Yes. Probably a couple couple hundred couple of hundred. know me yeah okay. how do you currently expand your network if i was going to i would just probably just go to events and meet okay. people so uh, physical in person correct yep okay what else uh social media Tell me more about what do you use for social media? I think you can get a lot of uh, interaction through social media, a lot of impressions on people, um, especially to get your name out. The hardest thing with social media is it's hard to be genuine um, mm -hmm. and not come off as you're just selling things. So I usually, for my personal real estate, I don't use uh, social media really at all. Um, and I know I should. I just haven't yeah. really so again, gotten... You don't, you don't know enough to know, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you an example of LinkedIn. Again, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of these work. Okay, There are people, I'll give you some strategies which will work for you. But I'll give you LinkedIn as an example of connecting with business people. Okay. Now, Facebook right. is the fastest way to connect with people, at least for a certain age group. Now, you may be more on Instagram, for my mm -hmm. age, you know, so again, everybody's age groups, that does make a difference, okay? But let me give you LinkedIn because LinkedIn is the easiest place to build a business network. Easiest place to build a business network. So how do you do it? I actually signed up for an extra service, which is uh, connected to LinkedIn. So it's authorized by and sponsored with LinkedIn and they do automation. I don't have the time. You don't have the time to do everything, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So they do automation, which means they send out automatic requests for connection. 
they send out automated messaging sequence. And because it is in connection with LinkedIn, mm -hmm. it doesn't come across as if you are going to be in a problem. You know what I'm saying, right? You see what I'm saying? Okay. And the way you design messages are going to be very professional and very simple to work with so that you can, over a time period, not like get people to be impressing, be thinking that you are just a spammer, right? Which mm -hmm. is what typically happens, right? So I get a lot of incoming requests from people who just want to spam, right? Yeah. So like, I'm not interested, right? But if they come across as somebody who has some enough relationships with me, like common connections, and if they come across as if they have something of value for me, then I'm more interested in connecting with those people. Okay? Mm -hmm. So one of my target markets is branch managers of mortgage companies. So I will show you how I'm doing that so that you will actually see how you can apply the same theory to yourself. So we okay. have listed, I brought, yesterday I had a session with the expert and I was already doing similar things, but they had a little bit more advanced way of doing it than I did. So I picked mm -hmm. California, Florida, Texas, and uh, Washington state where the branch managers are. And I send them a connection request. Very simple, I'll show you that. And the moment they accept it, because I have a book, you don't have one, but don't worry, we'll find something for you. Mm -hmm. And that book is the next thing I say, hey, would you like to receive a copy of this? How do I come across to them if I say, hey, here is a book that could be of interest to you. Can I send you? Mm -hmm. How does that feel to that person? I think it would be nice. Mm -hmm. I come across as an authority. Mm -hmm. I come across as somebody trying to help. Mm -hmm. You see the point, right? Okay. Because if I come across as somebody trying to help, are they more open to look at my messages? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I'll actually show you this so you can see it here. So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So here is somebody, he's Southeast Regional Manager, Thursday, which was yesterday. I sent him an email. Hi Jim, I'm always looking to connect with other professionals in the mortgage world. I'm also, I also saw we are mutually connected to some good people as well. Let's connect. Very simple, very, not very threatening. He says, mm -hmm. I'm happy to connect. Then I send us, Email saying, thanks for connecting. Quite a few top 1%. Actually, I should correct that. Scotsman Guide allows use my books in team development. Would you like a copy of, I see a couple of spelling mistakes here. Would you like a copy of my book, Million Dollar Team Secrets? My other book is Stop Hiring Losers. Look what his response is. What is it? Can you read? Hunter? Yes. Can you read that response? Uh, I can't read it. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can. Please, that would be awesome. Thank you for the kind gesture. Do you see how that is? And I send him a link. He just sends me the address, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I only sent him the copy of the book. Wow. Now, you don't have to send the book. You'll find yeah. a place for you to do that. Mm hmm. And you could send out, starting out 15, 20 messages a day like this to different people. Mm -hmm. And you can pick people in your neighborhood, in your area, right? Yeah. Just connect with those people. But your goal is to keep building that network. Not everybody's going to say yes. Not everybody's going to connect with you. But your goal is to build a strong list of thousand. Now, obviously, if you build a list of 10,000, that's fine. But again, there is, a re there is a limit to how many people you can talk to. There's a limit to how many people you can engage with. Yeah. Okay. So at some point, we will talk about using something which will make it easier for you to stay in touch with people by using a phone call as well. I use software, which I think I've, I would love to get on the call with you, with your dad as well, and teach him about it, which is called Phone Burner. You can call 
about 50 people in an hour. Okay, would that be fast? Yeah, that's really fast. Exactly. So I have a person who makes cold calls for me out of Philippines or sometimes follows up with my clients. He makes three to 400 calls a day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Using that software. Mm. Okay. And it is that like robo call, robo call. It's not that. It's, mm. it just speeds up the process of calling. Yeah. Because every time if you have to call somebody versus punch, 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 find the number, click, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. system, once you load the numbers, it just dials one after the other. Okay. So it makes your job a lot easier. But could you potentially, if you are serious, take an hour to call 50 people a day? Yeah. Okay, good. If you call 50 people a day, how many people can you call in a month about 20 days? If I, how many can I call in 20 days? Yes. If you call 50 a day. 2,000? 1,000. 1,000? Oh, one, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> now you know the reason I came up with that 1,000, right? Yeah. It is reasonable for me to expect you to take an hour a day to make calls mm -hmm. to 50 people a day so that if you did that repeatedly for a month, you'd have called 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. And then next month, find another reason to call those 1,000 people. Next month, call those. Do you see what I'm saying? And you mm -hmm. keep calling those thousand people every day, every month, right? Once a month, they will remember you. Mm -hmm. How many of those 140 agents in your mom's office do you think do that? Zero. You see how different you will be pretty soon? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's not complicated. We will teach you the steps to take. But these are simple steps to start with. We are not going to make anything very complicated. So the first thing we talked about is have some clarity on your goals. I gave you a tip on how to start building your network. Are you on LinkedIn by any chance? Uh, no, I don't okay. have a plan. So I would recommend you start LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com, create your profile, send it to people like me, your dad, and other people who already have a profile and start having connections. Okay. If you are good at Facebook and Instagram, then start forming connections there as well. But building that network of a thousand people is going to be critical. If you have a network, networking event, something going on in your area, definitely go there. Now here is the secret. You want to always be the person who is automatically taking charge. How can you take charge? without trying to be a bulldozer. I'll give you a tip. Go to an event, you can stand at the entrance, greet everybody, shake their hand. Mm. Nobody's going to say, don't do that. Right? Yes. Until what would happen if you go to an event and you are at the entrance, you say, hey, my name is Hunter, what's yours? Everybody you meet. You would meet someone. Yeah. Good. So I know the next section session we were planning on. You're planning to be in Mexico, correct? Uh, I will be in Mexico in June. Yes. What time are you? What date are you looking to be in Mexico? Uh, I think it's the twentieth to the twenty fifth. Okay. So let's take a look at my calendar. So let's move it to 16th of the month. Okay. Let me put that in mind really quick. Okay, let me take a look here. I have you at 10.30 your time. We'll try to keep that time consistent. So 16th is Thursday. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. So I have you down for 16th for our next call. And okay. in between, I'm going to see you obviously. Now, are you going to be on the call with us on Monday? I don't know what your plans are for Monday. 
It's 8 a.m. Monday. Central time. 8 a.m. my time. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay, good. I'll send you the link for the Zoom. And again, your goal is very simple on these calls. Interact as much as you can. Participate as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a small group right now because we are just building this group up. But you'll have fun. You know, my daughter is on the call. One of my persons from Philippines who makes my calls is on the call. We have a couple of trainers on the call. So it's like you start getting one person from India, one person from London, another from Arizona. Yeah. You know, so you'll have different type of people. So you'll start yeah. learning from those people as well. When you stay committed, you're going to have a great future. Okay, good. So what did you get from our call today? Uh, I think I learned some good basics. I think I learned uh, that it's definitely possible. And there's definitely things that I can learn and teach myself that will definitely improve uh, the current way that I'm going at things or, you know, change the current way and make it better, um, which is always good. You always want to keep improving. So in that regard, um, definitely very excited, you know, to continue learning and uh, to have that resource. So absolutely. What is one action step you took up today? One action I took out today. Well, I gotta. So I gotta do my. I gotta set my goals. So that's the. Well, I'm sorry. What was the question? Yeah, yeah. What is one takeaway? One oh, one takeaway. Um, I like the networking side. Um, yes. mm -hmm. calling calling fifty people a day. That's really big. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like the networking side a lot. I like the goal setting side. Um. Very good. And I think, I think we'll really start to build up. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so proud of you. I see such a big future in front of you. Oh, thank, thank you. Absolutely. Because this is the age when you have the energy, you don't have distractions, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have a family to feed. You don't have to, you mm -hmm. know, all that kind of distractions that you would normally have. Now, I'm not saying those are bad things, but right now your focus is simply get better. That's it. Mm-hmm. And you have the energy and enthusiasm for it. And I love that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Yep, fantastic. Well, have a great weekend. I'll talk to you on Monday. I'll be sending you a short email right now with the three things that I talked about so that you okay. can take that. I recorded this call. I will get a transcription done as well. So you'll have the video recording and the transcription. Okay? Okay, awesome. What a pleasure. Hey. Manesh, thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.